Welcome to the Land of House YouTube channel. I'm Seth. Today I'm going to be installing a one inch hydraulic ram pump. This is a water pump that does not need fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing, falling water. I'm also going to be installing the Land to House filter bucket. This takes out the air and also helps prevent silt from getting into your system. So uh, for the past six or seven years, I've shown you my normal ram pump that I use for testing. Well, September 27th, 2024, Hurricane Helene uh, wiped out most of my creek and rerouted it about 30 feet this way, which I'll show you. And so I need to install a whole new system. And that's where this ram pump is going to come into play. So let me show you my old system real quick, and then we will get to work doing a full install of a one inch hydraulic ram pump. This right here is where the creek used to be. It would flow right down here. I had a uh, supply pipe that brought water down to a old filter bucket. That got knocked over. My pipe is probably still usable. We may pull some of that here in just a bit if it's needed. But I had seven feet of drop or head pressure that brought water down to my pump over here. Let me cross this tree so you can see it real quick. This is the ram pump that I've used for years. You can see it's been uh, knocked over and messed up. So I think some of it could still be used, but I will be pulling out the uh, delivery pipe, which takes water uphill, and we will reroute that to the new pump location. So where the creek used to be was right there. Where the creek is now goes on over around that way. So that's where the new installation is about to take place. Let's head over there and get this installed. Goodness, you can see I've got over 150 trees kicked down into the creek from that storm going up the creek that way. To get started, I need a screened intake to bring water into the system. I found my old intake washed up to this point right here. Let me see if I can get it out of here and we'll put new screen on it so it can be used to pull water into my new system. This is the water intake system I've been using for several years. This was my very first idea for an intake. Basically, I cut a window open here with a pipe inside, lots of holes on the bottom, and I put screen over it. Later, I found out it was just fine to simply put a bunch of holes in pipe and then put a screen on it. I do use a product called Unisil, which is this rubber gasket right here, and that's what allows the, um, the pipe, the one-inch pipe, to go into the cap. So, uh, my screen is pretty torn up. I'm going to put new screen over these and then uh, I'll attach them back together right here and then we'll get this put in the water so it can pull fresh water into the ram pump system. I find the window screen works well. You may have to replace it every year, but uh, it at least will get you going for the season. I now have screen over my intake and it's looking nice. I have a one inch outlet over here and that's gonna attach to this one inch poly pipe or roll pipe whichever you prefer so what i need to do is find a good open pool of water that i can sink the intake into and get this to go downhill the entire length so i'm going to go up under any kind of obstacles such as this log here and run my pipe all the way up the creek until i find a good intake i found this pool of water right here i think it's going to work all right for an intake we will give it a try and see what happens. So I'm going to put my poly pipe on the edge of my screened intake and then sink this down into the water. And then I'm going to build a little dam here to get the uh, pipe or the water up and the pipe down. I now have the screened intake in the water. Now, one of the most difficult parts of the ram pump is getting the water started. So you'll see how deep it is right there, totally submerged, but there is a slight upward bend in that poly pipe right through here. So I have to get the water started in there. I'm gonna try pouring water through the end, and if that uh, doesn't work, I'll have to get the drill pump out and start the pipe. So we'll see if we can get it started real quick. Okay, this is great news. I have a little bit of water coming out of the pipe. It's not a full flow, but it's enough that if I raise this up, build up some water in the pipe, and then set it down quickly, it will help to pull the siphon. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Hold this up a good bit. Water's gonna back up in the pipe some, and then I will drop it quickly, and it should pull the siphon out of the pipe 
and get a full flow of water. Let's see if that was enough real quick. All right, nice. The poly pipe is referred to as the supply pipe and it brings water from the source down to either a stand pipe or in our case, a, uh, a filter bucket. So this will eliminate any air bubbles that might get in from the source through these holes right here. But it also allows this much room for silt to build up and not get to the ram pump. So I'm gonna set this right here. Hopefully I can get a spot level enough. That should do it. Now I'm gonna hook up this little adapter to go from poly pipe into the PVC pipe. And then that is gonna go into the bucket. Now that's gonna be the source water to the ram pump. I just pulled the PVC pipe off of my old system and moved it over here for the new system. I pulled the lid off the bucket and dried off this inlet right here. And so I'm gonna use a coupling to connect this right here to the pipe. And this will be the drive pipe of the ram pump. Now I can walk down to the other end and pick that up and where the water stops coming out, I measure down to the bottom and that will be the head pressure. So I may want to add a little bit more pipe to get it further down the creek to add a little more head pressure. We'll see. When you weren't looking, I pulled all 50 feet of the drive pipe from my previous ram pump install and used it for my new drive pipe. I also added 40 feet more, so I have a total of about 90 feet coming from my source bucket down to where the pump is gonna be placed. So let me just show you what that run of pipe looks like and then we will get to the actual installation of the pump itself. This is where we were working previously, where the filter bucket is. You can see I still have the lid off to the side where the water is gushing out, which is great flow rate, by the way. And so I've now got the drive pipe connected to the bucket. It comes down here out of the creek a little bit and then starts dropping down here. Now, this little section right here is not ideal because there will be a significant amount of bounce in the pipe. I may place something in there like a board to attach it to, and we'll see if that will uh, prevent it from bouncing. But the rest of it lays on the ground and moves on down to where we were just standing, right over there for a total of 90 feet. Now it does have a little bit of a curve to it, and that's gonna be fine as well. All right, let's go over here and get the ram pump installed. It's important that the ram pump be oriented up and down in this fashion not leaning over in one direction or going forward or back much. The reason for that is you want your valve to typically be straight up and down unless you turn it on purpose, but you do want the pressure tank to always be up and down in this orientation. So to do a uh, mounting, I will take a couple of these plumber's tape or plumber strap and I put it right there. And then I use a couple of these uh, outdoor decking screws to hold this into place. I find that two pieces is enough, typically. That should do it. I'm gonna remove the ball valve from the pump here by unscrewing the union. And then I can take this and put it on here. I've already got some Teflon tape on the pipe, so shouldn't have to add any more of that. Now it's time to put the lid of the bucket back on that has the source water, so I've got all this water coming out. I'm gonna place this right here. Now if I need to, I can put a rock on that to keep it in place. Now the amount of drop between the bucket and where the ram pump is, is known as head pressure. I need at least five feet, preferably seven feet, in order to get as high as I want to lift. So 
I'm gonna raise this up to the point where it stops flowing out and that will be even with the bucket. So let's go ahead and raise this up real quick. See where it stops flowing. All right, it's uh, less than six feet. Yeah, I think we're looking at right at five and a half feet there for the uh, drive pipe head pressure. Now it's time to get the ram pump attached to the drive pipe. It's gonna be kind of down here in this little hole, but I think it's gonna be all right. I'm gonna turn off the water with the ball valve. I can then attach the pump onto that valve. When I open this up, water will squirt out that end. If I close this, we can then test the ram pump by pressing the waste valve and it will build up pressure in the tank really fast. All right, as you can see, the ram pump is working on its own because there is no delivery pipe connected and I've got that end of the pump closed off. So let me go ahead and stop that. Now pressure has already been built up in that tank. Let me show you what it looks like whenever I release that pressure here. <laughs> Shot out somewhere around uh, 25, 30 feet over there. All right, now it's time to attach the delivery pipe. I've detached the delivery pipe ball valve by way of the union, and I've got an NPT to barb half inch fitting on the back side here. And that's because I'm going to be using poly pipe to get the water up the hill. So I need to get that connected. It's just a press fit. Now, if you have enough pressure on your system, you will have to have hose clamps on this. But for me, I'm only going up 35 feet, and it should not have a problem here but if it does I will come back with uh, those uh, hose clamps to keep that pressure in there I'm gonna place a couple heavy rocks on the board down here to make sure the pump stays in position we don't want it bouncing around there we go that ought to do it now, I'm gonna open up the drive pipe to start the pump. The valve is gonna snap closed and stop because the water is gonna bypass the pump and start filling up the delivery pipe to match the input head pressure. Once that's done, I need to start manually clicking this valve until there is enough water in the delivery pipe going uphill to push back down on the pump. It's called back pressure. So sometimes this is gonna take anywhere from just a couple of clicks to uh, a couple hundred, depending on how flat the ground is going uphill and how long your delivery pipe is. So let me sit here and click this for a while and uh, I'll bring you back whenever it is starting on its own. You can tell when the valve starts getting easier to press that you're getting closer to having the pump operate on its own. So I believe we are getting close here and it'll also start uh, one or two cycles on its own without you having to press the valve. So just to reiterate, I am filling up the delivery pipe uphill until there's enough back pressure to keep the pump going. So in my case, I've got approximately five and a half feet of drop, but I'm trying to lift water about 35 feet. So, okay. We're starting to get some action on its own here. It may still stop, we'll see. Now this one inch ram pump is going to consume about six gallons per minute to operate. And it's gonna be able to pump up to three quarters of a gallon a minute in an ideal situation. This one's probably not quite gonna do that, but it will get close. So if you look at the drive pipe over here, there is a good bit of bounce that is occurring. And so I need to come back here and take some rocks and just place rocks over the pipe to prevent the bounce from occurring. 
and that will greatly increase the lift potential because that bounce is not going to be essentially lost kinetic energy. It's important to have enough water at your source and as you can see the bucket is overflowing a lot so we have more than enough water to run this pump. However, you can see whenever it cycles, it will shift the water over. But it has more than enough overflow to keep this pump going. Now that I have the ram pump cycling, it's time to follow the delivery pipe uphill all the way up to my storage tank to see how far up the water makes it. Hopefully all the way. The ram pump is in the creek right down in there and the delivery pipe comes through culvert under the road and skirts its way in this ditch and then goes all the way uphill to the top to a tank up there. Now I can actually tap on the pipe and hear the difference. So uh, if I tap here, it's a full pipe and you can actually pick it up and feel that it's heavy as well. So let's see how far up we can go and find where the water has made it so far. I walked all the way up the hill tapping the pipe and it seemed like it was full the whole way and I got right here and it was full until right there. You can hear the difference. Empty, full. <laughs> Let me see if I can get up there. It might beat us up to it. I was not expecting it to go that fast. I built this water tower a couple years ago and it has worked well. I should clean this thing off too. So yeah, I'd say we're within a minute of the water getting up here. All right, get ready, we're close. There we go. So the ram pump with only about five and a half feet of input head pressure has lifted water to over 35 feet and that is the results. Now it may speed up here in just a bit and you'll start to see that it surges as well. So each time the pump uh, cycles, a little bit of uh, water is pushed up here. Uh, so it may not look like much, but over time that right there is a lot of water. Let's go ahead and put this into the tank. Now as far as my tank filling system goes, this pipe right here takes the water up the hill and to the top of the tank and enters in that way. I've got a pipe, it's a stand pipe here, and you can see that it exits just before it gets to the top, and that is the overflow. So the extra water will go right over there to that pipe. And then finally, this pipe right here is what takes water downhill to be used for whatever purpose I need to use it for. I used a, a two inch fern co to attach to the IBC tank right there. I hope you found this installation of a one inch ram pump to be helpful. I have four different sizes of ram pump available on my website, eBay, and on Amazon. I'll have links to those in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.